Hi everyone, and welcome to another episode of Road Choice TV. I'm Justin, your host, and this is the first episode in our two-part series on coolants. The topic of coolants and antifreeze can be confusing because there are so many different coolant technologies available in the aftermarket. Road Choice simplifies things by offering two distinct categories of coolants, conventional and extended life. Today we're talking about the basics of conventional coolants to help you understand these particular technologies. I'll show you how to test your coolant, and I'll offer some tips on choosing the best coolant technology for your truck or fleet. So let's get started. A coolant's job is to transfer heat in your engine's cooling system. It provides freeze and boil over protection so your truck can run in a wide range of temperatures. Let's look a little closer at how coolants function. Water transfers the heat within a cooling system, but water alone has some drawbacks. Water freezes at 32 degrees Fahrenheit and boils at 212 degrees. So coolant manufacturers add ethylene glycol to assure additional freeze and boil protection. A 50-50 coolant offers freeze protection to minus 34 degrees and boil protection up to 265 degrees for a system with a 15 pound radiator cap. Plus, water can be corrosive to metal parts, so inhibitors are added to protect against liner cavitation, corrosion, and scale. A typical premix, or 50-50 coolant, is essentially a blend of 48% ethylene glycol, 48% water, and 4% inhibitor protection. But did you know that 95% of premix coolant technologies are the same? The only differences are the dye color that's added and the inhibitor package. Well, that's what coolants have in common. Now let's compare the two conventional coolant technologies. Green conventional coolant technology has been around for years. It's still available, but it's dated technology that has certain drawbacks. It's formulated for passenger cars and light trucks, which means it doesn't provide enough protection for a heavy duty diesel engine. It doesn't protect against liner cavitation, which could create an overhaul issue costing ten dollars to $25,000 in repairs. Green conventional coolant is high in TDS, or total dissolved solids, plus it's unstable, which means that over time the inhibitors in green conventional coolant will fall out of solution and plug radiators and heater cores. This can also affect the water pump seal. This is why green conventional technology is no longer a factory fill coolant for any OEM. The other conventional coolant option is supplemental coolant additive or SCA precharged. This is also an older technology, but it's specifically formulated for heavy duty engines. SCA coolants are precharged with additives that protect cylinder liners against cavitation, corrosion, and dropout. But while SCA coolants have been a common factory fill for the past 15 to 20 years, they have drawbacks as well. Adding too much SCA can lead to dropout, which can affect the water pump and clog the radiator and heater cores. SCA technology is both time consuming and expensive from a maintenance standpoint. It requires frequent testing and additional parts like SCA additives, filters, and test strips. Perhaps most importantly, SCA formulations aren't as effective with heat transfer, especially compared to today's extended life coolant technology. After around three months, or 20 to 25,000 miles, SCAs start to dilute due to engine heat. So unless you're regularly checking and adding to your SCA protection, you run the risk of liner cavitation or corrosion-related engine failure. Whichever conventional coolant technology you use, Regular fluid testing is essential to protect your engine, avoid expensive overhauls, and stay on schedule. Here are some helpful guidelines for detecting problems and how to solve them. We advise testing conventional coolants at every service or at a minimum of every three to four months or every 25,000 miles, whichever comes first. There are five indicators to test for, color, clarity, odor, freeze point, and inhibitor protection. To perform each test, start by pulling a fluid sample from the radiator or surge tank. For color, compare the test sample to a known good sample. They should look similar in color, either fluorescent green or fuchsia for conventional coolants. Testing for clarity, there shouldn't be any particles or cloudiness or oil in the coolant. 
Those would indicate you're having cooling system issues. For odor, a strong smell of ammonia can indicate high pH, which can destroy soft metals. If your coolant fails any of these first three tests, the solution's pretty straightforward. If your sample appears brown, opaque rather than clear, has a strong ammonia odor, your only option is to drain, clean, flush, and refill the system with new coolant. If the coolant passes the visual inspection and odor test, the next step is to check the freeze point. It's best to use a refractometer and adjustment chart to test for dilution. This will tell you the water to ethylene glycol ratio. The goal is to get the freeze point within an ideal range of minus 23 and minus 50 degrees Fahrenheit. If your freeze point's out of range, follow the adjustment chart to correct the problem. For example, if your refractometer reading shows that your freeze point is minus 65 degrees Fahrenheit, this indicates too much ethylene glycol in your system and not enough water to provide adequate heat transfer. Here's how to rebalance the freeze point in a 12 gallon cooling system. Drain 8 quarts or 2 gallons and add 2 new gallons of 50-50 coolant. This will adjust the freeze point in the right ratio for proper heat, boil, and freeze protection. Finally, for inhibitor protection, Use a standard test strip to make sure the inhibitor concentration is strong enough to protect the cylinder liners and prevent corrosion and scale. The color guide on the container will let you know the status of your test sample and what to do about it. A reading of 1200 parts per million of nitrite would indicate the proper amount of SCA protection. Green conventional coolants are designed for automotive use and don't contain any inhibitors. So for heavy duty applications, one pint of SCA must be added per every four gallons of coolant in the cooling system. For SCA precharged coolants, if the system tests are undertreated, SCA must be added to achieve 1200 parts per million of nitrite. With more than 40% of engine downtime due to poor cooling system maintenance, choosing the right coolant and testing regularly is important to your bottom line. So remember, the older green conventional coolants don't offer adequate protection for heavy duty diesel engines. And while SCA precharged coolants are still recommended by some OEMs, the ongoing cost of labor, maintenance, and poor heat transfer can be an issue. But there's a better option for optimum engine protection and performance, Road Choice Extended Life Coolants. And I'll tell you all about it in our next episode. In the meantime, to learn more about Road Choice coolants, visit your nearest Road Choice parts counter and check out our products, catalogs, and videos at roadchoice.com. Send me your questions about this topic or any other Road Choice TV episode to justin at roadchoice.com and I'll get you an answer. And be sure to like and follow us on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter for our latest products, announcements, and special offers. As always, thanks for watching and keep coming back for new episodes. We're here to give you information and tips you can put to use right away to keep your truck performing at its best.